from Fairfield, Connecticut. This is Pointless Nostalgia. I'm in front of the Patriots Bank, but what we're gonna talk about happened across the street. <laughs> what the hell is that? Hello and greetings from Fairfield, Connecticut. I am right across the street from the Lawncroft Cemetery. And I think it was 1999, the WWE put on the most tasteless segment I believe they have ever done at the cemetery across the street. I'm gonna talk to you about it here. We'll go over there, we will match some shots. But when I go over there, I'm gonna speak in a soft tone and try to be as respectful as possible. Uh, but here is where it was. The storyline was that Big Show's father had died. The big boss man who was feuding with him, which was pretty cool, because the big boss man had fallen, had fallen out of favor over the years. I mean, he was past his big prime where he was fighting in a steel cage match on Saturday night's main event against Hulk Hogan. And now he had had this comeback where he was wearing like this black outfit and he was a kind of a more serious character. And I mean, I don't know how much more serious. He was a brutal police officer who became like this brutal security guard for Vince McMahon. But either way, he was getting another run and it was very exciting. And so as he's feuding with the big show, the idea came up that what if we say that the big show, Paul White, and we'll call him Paul White now so we don't confuse Big Boss Man and Big Show. What if we say Paul White's father just died and the Big Boss Man is gonna torment him and mock him about it. So Paul is on TV, gets the news that his father has passed away. In the ring, he's told this, and out comes the Big Boss Man to read a poem where he says, I'm glad your father's dead. Ha, 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 your daddy's dead. He does this really, really insulting poem about Big Show's father, just to really anger the Big Show. So the Big Show gets very angry. They then decide they're gonna shoot a sequence here at this cemetery. Now, according to Brother Love, Bruce Pritchard, who uh, was a WWE, uh, I'm not sure what his title would have been at the time. I don't know if he was doing creative or whatever, but whatever he was doing, he was in charge of a shoot. He said that they called him and Vince called him and said, hey, I've got a shoot at a cemetery. Uh, can you go help them out? And it turned out he didn't want help. He wanted him to do the shoot because this is a wild shoot. You're doing this shoot, which you'll see where they're loudly, you know, insulting a man that his father's dead at a, at a cemetery, at a real cemetery on a weekend when people are visiting their relatives in the cemetery and when a cemetery right right across the other side they're having a funeral a real funeral so they've got a fake funeral set up on this side on that side there's a real funeral going on they tried to keep the volume on the loudspeaker uh which by the way is like the blues brothers mobile it's way over the top they tried to keep the volume as low as possible uh, but they said even so, once it turned on, it was loud. And Bruce said the moment that they started, he knew he was never going to come back to this cemetery again. Uh, this cemetery was finished for them uh, by that point. Big Show takes a bump off the car. He takes another ridiculous bump after he rides on the coffin. Uh, we're going to take a look at all those spots. So let's go across the street, try to be respectful because we are in a place where people have passed away. Uh, when they went through it, you'll see a lot of the graves, I mean, almost all the graves in the area where they were didn't exist then. So they were riding and driving and walking over land that people hadn't been buried in yet, but they are buried there now. So we're going to look very respectfully at a very disrespectful angle right across the street. Let's go. So here we are. We're in the spot. I'm going to match up as many of the locations as I can. Uh, we are standing right where everything would have been set up, where the whole funeral area would have been. You can see the tombstones all go this way, but they set it up as if the stone would be here. All right, so we look at this shot and you notice this stone right here, it's right there. So that whole thing would have been set up right this way. The whole green canopy, the whole burial area would have been set up in this area 
And if you look, all of the stones here, 2009, 2006, uh, rest in peace to these people, they are buried right where was once an empty area of the cemetery, and that's why they set up here. Here's a couple shots that would have been taken from this angle. Paul standing right there, talking about his father. Now his father had actually passed many years before. Uh, this was a this was an idea that they had that he he thought would work, and so they came out here to shoot it. As Paul is talking, you can see. Big Boss Man arrived right here down this road. You can see those uh, tombstones there in the foreground. And he drove that Blues Brothers Mobile right around here. And at this post here, you can see he turned, came right over to here where this, uh, I don't know, crypt mausoleum, I don't know what that is, but he pulled around here and you can see you see these two stones here? As he turned the corner and went over here, here's another shot of him turning the corner and that would have been right here, pulling around till he finally parked his uh, Blues Brothers vehicle right in this area and started shouting over that loudspeaker. So he would pull up and he pulled right up and parked right here on the lawn, right in this spot. And you can see the edge of that in the background as he pulls up. He then opens the door. So now facing this way and starts shouting and insulting Paul White as he stands over in this area. But then he changed tactics. Right in this spot, he uh, he asked Paul White's mom if she would be interested in dating a nice country boy like him. This, of course, puts Paul over the top, and Paul jumps on his car, which would have been here, jumped on his car as the car pulled over this way. So with Paul White lying on the ground here, big, uh, big Boss Man, I keep wanting to say Big Show, you got Big Show and Big Boss Man. Big Boss Man got to work over here, actually it would have been right about here, hooking that coffin up to the back of the Blues Brothers mobile. So this shot was filmed from about this angle. Uh, the trees have grown up a bit, but you can see that bent tree and you can see the fence faintly behind there and you can see this house that's in the distance. And in some of the other shots, you can see this house right back here. So with the coffin hooked up, he starts pulling this way and he actually drives right through here. These big rocks were here, but all of these stones, uh, you can tell by the, the dates here, these are all newer than that. And so these weren't there. And he drove right through here, tearing up the lawn with Big Show riding right past him, up towards that way. The rock fence there is all finished now. You see all the rocks up against the fence. It wasn't at the time. There was actually a, a tree stump you could see because they were clearing things out at the time, getting things ready to have a nice rock wall along there. And that brings this one to a close. Interesting story. Let's go out so I can talk to you about it. So after Boss Man peels out, tearing up the cemetery, uh, he was told, pull around the side. We're all gonna meet up in one area. Just go there and get out of the cemetery. So they all got out of the cemetery. Bruce said that he had to, you know, pay for what they, they you know, the damage they caused, apologize to everybody. And he knew they were never gonna let them shoot here again. And they didn't. So uh, prior to this, there had been some Undertaker promos and other things that were shot at this cemetery, but they were shot at night and they were done when other mourners weren't around and they weren't as ridiculous and over the top as this. Now, Boss Man and Big Show liked the angle and so did everybody that saw it in the company. Uh, the word was, it's, it's so campy, it's so ridiculous, it's so over the top that 
it goes from being disrespectful to just being too silly to take seriously. And I will say, I've shown it to people and they always laugh. They can't take it for any, they, they never say, oh my God, I feel so bad for that man who's having his funeral interrupted. They're like, this is obviously a skit. You know, this is uh, a skit and done for fun. So anyway, that's what it was. It ended up uh, leading to a match where Big Show won. Big Show defeated the Big Boss Man, got his, uh, Big Boss Man got his comeuppance, I guess, right? He got his, I don't know. He got beat. And uh, Paul White stood victorious. And that's that. So from here in Fairfield, I'm Guy Hutchinson. Now a box is gonna pop up here and a box over here. And you can choose either one. I'm in both of them. Right here, Fairfield. Choose a box. I'll see you next time.